Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Child Anxiety Fact Podcast. My name is Dawn Friedman, and I'm the owner of Child Anxiety Support, a membership for parents of anxious kids. I have my master's in clinical counseling and additional postgraduate training in child anxiety disorders, including exposure and response prevention and the Supportive Parenting for Anxious Childhood Emotions Program, or SPACE program, which was designed by Dr. Ellie Levowitz of the Yale Child Study Center. I'm also certified in infant toddler mental health. FAC stands for Frequently Asked Questions, and each week I'll be answering your questions about childhood and teen anxiety. Let's get started. Happy Wednesday, everybody. This week's question is, why isn't therapy working for my anxious child? This is such a useful question, and I'm really glad that a listener submitted it. Now, this person didn't say what they mean by, quote, working, so I'm going to assume that their anxious child is still anxious, even though they're in therapy, and that's how I'm going to answer it. So let's get into it. Why isn't the therapy working? Why is your child still anxious? Well, there could be several reasons, and let's walk through them. First of all, that may be the wrong therapist for your child. The greatest predictor of therapeutic success, meaning the client makes progress towards their goals, is a good fit therapist. And that means different things for different people. Same goes for kids. Think about all the teachers you had growing up. I'm sure you liked some of them more than others. Just being a teacher doesn't make you the best teacher for every student. My very most favorite teacher was Mrs. Schwartz, and she made my third grade an absolute dream. Then when my little brother got her, his third grade didn't go as well. She just wasn't the same personality fit for him that she was for me. If you're not sure if the therapist is a good fit, ask your child and ask the therapist. How do they think things are going? Is the child participating? Are they sharing in session? Does the therapist feel like they have a handle on what's going on? Are they building rapport? A wrong therapy fit may also be that the therapist just doesn't see things in the same way that your family does, whether that's the parents or the child. As an example, let's pretend a therapist is working with the Ingalls family, you know, from Little House on the Prairie. Carrie was always kind of nervous in those books, do you remember? So maybe the family brings Carrie to therapy and the therapist says, your family needs to quit moving around all the time. This constant traveling around the country in a covered wagon is just too disruptive for a sensitive child like Carrie. And the family's like, hey, listen, that's how we do things. Telling us to just stop isn't helpful or realistic. See, that would be a poor fit. They might do better with a therapist who says, Yeah, my parents moved us around a lot too. I get it. I know how it is. I can totally address this with Carrie in session. It also may be that therapy isn't working because the therapist has a different conceptualization of what's going on. So make sure you know what the treatment plan is. What are the goals? Maybe your child isn't reaching those goals because you and the therapist have totally different ideas about what should be happening next. Maybe you're hoping they deal with your anxious child's sleep problems, and the therapist is working on test anxiety. Keep those lines of communication open so that you're sharing and collaborating with the therapist. Sometimes, especially with younger children, the therapist isn't offering developmentally appropriate interventions. Working with kids is a specialized skill that requires specialized training. I remember talking to one family who took their kindergartner to someone who said they worked with younger kids, but then had no toys in their office other than an antique tin Ferris wheel that the child wasn't even allowed to touch. The younger the child is, the more therapy should be play focused. Another reason that your child's therapy may not be working is because, frankly, your child isn't interested in changing. Now, there are ways to work on motivating an unmotivated child or teen for sure, but ultimately, we cannot force anyone to behave differently if they don't want to. Some children resent being in therapy and won't participate, and some children will perform really well in the therapy office, doing what the therapist asks, answering questions, but it's all surface level, and the child is unwilling or unable to bring that work out into the real world. 
Lots of times kids are coming to therapy not because they want to be there, but because their parents have decided that they need to be there. Or the child is willing to come, but that doesn't mean they're really ready to participate. The anxious child might not be interested in learning new skills or facing their fears. They might not care whether or not their parents stop nagging because their fear is greater than their discomfort with their parents' reactions. Sometimes therapy is just going to take a lot longer than you think. Maybe your child is going to take longer to build that rapport and buy into the therapy. This can be especially true with anxious kids who struggle with transitions and new situations. And also sometimes it is simply just not the right time for that child to be in therapy. I'll tell you that my bias is not to send kids to therapy against their will, especially if they're anxious kids. And that's because therapy is likely to be something that they will want or need later on in their life. And I think it's important that they have a good feeling about it. I have a strong pro-therapy bias, obviously. And I don't think anyone, especially kids, should be coerced into going because it's likely to give them a bad feeling about counseling and make it more difficult for them to reach out when they are ready. And this goes to another part. Another reason therapy might not be working is that the parent is not doing their part in creating change. And I'm not blaming parents here. Sometimes, in fact, often, this is because the parents don't even know they're supposed to be doing anything. If the therapist isn't sharing that with them, how would they know that? Even if an anxious child is in therapy, even if an anxious child is participating and bringing home the tools they learn in therapy, if their environment isn't shifting to supporting instead of accommodating their anxiety, then the anxiety will continue. Even if the child is making progress in session, If they aren't getting the opportunity to practice coping, to confront their anxiety, to deal with their discomfort, then the progress will only exist in session. In my own clinical practice, a frequent challenge would be that I would be working with a child on an anti-anxiety plan. We'd come up with a really clear plan. The child would agree to it, would be committed to it, and was ready to implement it. And then they would take that plan home with their parent and the parent would unintentionally undermine it. The child would be ready to do the difficult thing whether that was to confront the challenge at school or socially, and the parent, in an effort to be helpful, would undo that child's hard work and preparation by questioning them or reassuring them or interrupting the process. This could look like a child about to step out on stage and the parent says, are you sure you're ready? Or the child is trying to sleep alone or do something else that they usually require help with. And when they become tearful, because naturally this is hard and a little scary, the parent says, you know what, you can just try again tomorrow. Basically, the child may be doing the prep work, but still needs their parent to hold the boundaries and to remind them of their skills. No matter how often I was telling the parent they needed to do this part, Well, for some parents, it was just really hard. They needed more direction and more encouragement, which is why ultimately I shifted to working directly with parents entirely. As I dug into the research, it became clear that the real key to change for anxious children and teens is their parents. If the parents can do their part, then the children, even without therapy, are able to do theirs. What I recognized is working just with the children, even if I told the parents, you're going to come along and do this too, I was still setting up the expectation that the change was situated in the children when the truth is the change is situated in the family. Now, personally, I think an ideal situation is the anxious child is in therapy with a good fit therapist and the child's parents are working in or with a program like mine. That one-two punch is the best bet to learning to deal with child anxiety. If a therapist isn't available for the child, and I know there's a shortage right now, or the child is unwilling to go, that does not and should not stop parents from doing their own learning and shifting the way that they deal with anxiety themselves. I'm curious, 
If therapy hasn't worked for your child, which of these issues do you think was contributing to that? Or was it something I didn't mention here? Feel free to let me know and reach out if you have any questions or thoughts. And if you are interested in learning more about the work I do with parents, head to my website, childanxietysupport.com, and schedule a consult with me. It's free. We'll get together. We'll talk by Zoom or phone and discuss what I might be able to offer you and your family. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you have a question you would like me to answer on the show, please go to childanxietysupport.com forward slash FAQ. And if you'd like to learn more about the Child Anxiety Support membership, please go to childanxietysupport.com. The membership offers courses, live events, and community to help you design a personalized program to free your family from the trap of child anxiety. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the podcast and sharing it with any friends or family who you think might find it helpful. You can get more of my child anxiety content over at Instagram, where I'm Dawn Friedman, MSED, or on Facebook at the Child Anxiety Support page. Thanks again, and have a great week.